Point number two is we are going to look at proverbs, allegories, parables, and signs teaching heavenly things to earthly people. All right? Teaching heavenly things to earthly people. And our text there at John 16, 25, Mark 4, 11. This, uh, our first uh, scripture is John 16, 25. So we go straight to our Bible here. And notice Jesus speaking. He says, These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. Okay? But the time is coming when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Now, Jesus said this on the night of his... Uh, the next day he would be crucified. <laughs> so when would be Jesus speaking plainly? When would he be no longer um, speaking in Proverbs? He was going to die the next day. <laughs> and then three days later, he would resurrect. Yes, he would spend 50 days um, talking with the disciples on and off. Right? And then he would ascend into, the, into heaven. So within two months' time, he would be gone. <laughs> so when would he be showing plainly of the father when would he be speaking to his disciples no more in proverbs it had to be when he was in heaven when he after he had ascended into heaven maybe he began um after he resurrected but i i i believe that he was more speaking of after the holy spirit was poured out and after the holy spirit poured out after jesus ascended into heaven the reason why i say that is that in john 16 Jesus was talking about also the um the coming of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 13. Howbeit when he the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. <laughs> Isn't that the same as saying he shall speak no more in proverbs but in plainly he will sh he will teach you plainly? Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come, right? So I believe that when Jesus said down here in verse 25, um, the time is coming when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly. He's talking about after the Holy Spirit was poured out <laughs> and Christ would manifest to his disciples through the Holy Spirit and give them the plain understanding that they need, which they could not have because they did not at that time yet have the Holy Spirit. Okay? And the Holy Spirit is key in this thing. Right? Now, let's look at the word um, Proverbs, by the way, in the le lexicon. Okay? So, so notice the word there. Let's go again. The, the word that the, the, the King James translates as Proverbs. Proverb, it's the Greek paroimia. It is an enigmatical or fictitious illustration. Right? So Jesus taught his disciples in Proverbs. Why did he use Proverbs? Because remember, Jesus was teaching about the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is in the spirit realm. It is not a natural kingdom. It's not an earthly kingdom. And so he has to use things which the disciples and us, we are only familiar with earthly things. So he has to use earthly symbols, right? But the time was coming which the Holy Spirit, when poured out, would now make the, the fullness of those parables and proverbs that jesus talked about it was going to expand the fullness and give the spiritual understanding and make the spiritual reality real to the disciples right so that's why in john 16 13 he was actually speaking about the giving of the holy spirit right and that holy spirit would guide them into all truth the spirit had to be given to make the spiritual and the heavenly things understandable to the disciples whose only point of reference was the earth and earthly things, right? All right, so let's get back to the Bible, okay? 
Now, John 14, 26 also talks about the Holy Spirit. Let's go to chapter 14, verse 26. Right? These, are, these are things that we need, we need to understand before we can. You see what people normally do? They want to go and pull from Revelation. They want to pull from Paul's writings. Oh, what about the, um, the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ? Oh, what about Revelation says this, that, and the other? Why do you think that we should ignore or feel somehow that what the Revelation has and what Paul, Paul wrote would somehow change what Jesus said? <laughs> you know, we should not understand um, Revelation and what Paul said and what Peter said and what uh, James said outside of the context of what Jesus gave. Jesus gave the context. He set up the, 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 the framework of his coming. He said to whom that coming would be. He said when that coming would be. And he said where that coming would be. Now we should now understand Revelation in that context that Jesus gave. We should understand Paul's, Paul's um, writings in the context that Jesus gave. We should understand Peter's writings. We talked about the heavens shall be dissolved and the, and the elements born up in the context of what Jesus said. Not outside of the context of what Jesus said. Okay? But anyway, so this is why it's important. It's important to look at what we are looking at here. Um, so, John 14, 26, look what Jesus says. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Now, what were these all things that would be brought to the remembrance of the disciples? The very proverbs and parables that Jesus taught, <laughs> right? And when they are brought to their remembrance now, with the illumination of the Holy Spirit, their minds now are equipped to grasp the spiritual reality of the parable and of the proverb and of the allegory, especially of the allegory of Jesus' ascension into the cloud out of the sight. <laughs> okay? Now, let, 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 and, and here again, I want, to, I want to impress on our minds what was the situation before, <clears throat> excuse me, what was the situation before the Holy Spirit and what was the situation after the Holy Spirit, okay? So before the Holy Spirit, let's go back to Acts chapter 1, okay? Acts chapter 1, let's go back there and look at, the, look at the situation of the disciples before the Holy Spirit was poured out, okay? Acts chapter 1 verse 7. Now Jesus said unto them, it is, sorry, let's, for, verse 6, sorry, sorry. Verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, asked of Jesus, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Good. Now look at Jesus' answer. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. Okay. But he goes on to say, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the, the land, actually, the word earth, there is land, okay? So, but let's go back up here. So, no, notice Jesus told them at that time, this is before the day of Pentecost, this is before the Holy Spirit was poured out. He said to them, look, it is not for you to know the times or seasons. You have to wait until you receive power from the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, right? Now, look at this. So that's before the Holy Spirit was poured out. Notice because he says clearly here, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. So we know for sure that Jesus is saying at that time, the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon his disciples the day of pentecost had not yet arrived and at that time he said it is not for them to know the times or the seasons now 
Look at this. This is going to blow you out of your seat. I tell you, you never heard it like this anywhere. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and look at verses 1 and 2, okay? 1 Thessalonians 5, look at verse 1 and 2. But This is Paul writing now. And Paul is now writing this approximately 30, yeah, about 30 to 35 20 to 25 years. Yeah, 25 to 30 years after Pentecost. Okay? Look at what Paul says now. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, notice times and seasons. Good? Let's just jump back here. Let's just, just, let's just jump back to, the, to Acts chapter 1, verse 7. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, right? That's what Jesus told them before the Holy Spirit was poured out. Good? Now, look what Paul says. But of the same times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you for yourselves know perfectly. <laughs> You understand what made the difference before the Holy Spirit? Jesus is saying, look, yeah, don't worry about that. You don't need to know about the times and seasons. But now after the Holy Spirit, what is the counsel now? You don't even have need for me to write that about that to you because you yourselves know perfectly the times and the seasons. You know the times and the seasons. You know that the day of the Lord is coming as a thief in the night. You know what time and what season that is going to have. That, that is going to happen. <laughs> right? What made the difference? The Holy Spirit made the difference. Okay? So the, perf the Holy Spirit now gave perfect understanding of the times and the seasons. Good? Now, so the Holy Spirit gave the perfect understanding of the proverbs the allegories the parables the signs that jesus used in his teaching ministry okay we can think of some of those ex of those um, allegories and signs and parables and proverbs for example when he said eat my flesh and drink my blood <laughs> we obviously know that was a parable Okay, that was a proverb. When he says, um, I am the manna from heaven, right? He's making an allegory. I, I'm, I'm the living water. We understand that these things are not literal. However, when we hear the, the terms coming with the clouds, seated at the right hand, the new Jerusalem descending from heaven, caught up in the air <laughs> trump of god sanctuary in heaven somehow we believe those are literal <laughs> right but the scripture just jesus just told his disciples we read there in john 16 25 that he always teach them in proverbs fictitious stories enigmatic fictitious stories parables okay it, his his teachings were not about literal clouds not about literal sitting on a throne not about a literal city coming down which is 144,000 furlongs this way and 144 cubits 144,000 cubits or whatever the, the dimensions that are given in the revelation those are not literal dimensions. <laughs> and the thousand years. These are not literal things. They are all parables, proverbs, allegories, which are unlocked only by the scripture. You got to compare scripture with scripture to get the understanding made clear by the influence of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Let's look at um, Mark 4 verse 11 for example it says and he said Jesus Jesus said unto his disciples okay for the context let's go up here when he was alone 
they that were about him with the twelve. Okay, so we're talking about the context of Jesus' followers, his disciples. Okay, he said unto them, unto you, unto who? Unto those who were following him at that time. It is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Point number one. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is a mystery. In other words, it is not like anything on this earth. <laughs> there is no single earthly comparison that we could make or that Jesus could have made to describe the kingdom of heaven. Or because notice sometimes you say the kingdom of heaven is like a, a, a tree. The kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like that. The kingdom of heaven is like a pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure. Right? He has to use all of these things. So though, even though he's using earthly things to explain the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is completely unlike any of those things. <laughs> That's why you cannot really stretch a parable too much. You cannot read into too much of a parable, right? So notice, so the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of God is a mystery. Good? He says, but unto them that are without. Without what? What the word mean, without means outside. Let's look at our lexicon. It's the Greek word exo, and it means outside outside <laughs> okay so to them that are outside outside of what outside of the kingdom okay so to them that are outside of the kingdom all these things are done in parables so tell me who is outside the kingdom now those who are looking at the parable or those who are looking for the reality of the parable. Because can you tell me, comment down below and tell me, are Christians today looking for the parable? Or are they understanding the reality of the parable? Because when you're looking for Jesus to physically come out of the sky in a flesh and blood body, are you looking for the the reality or are you looking for the parable are you looking for the reality or are you looking for the allegory which is it are you looking for if you are looking for the allegory then you are outside of the kingdom if you're if you if you have understood the reality of the allegory you are inside the kingdom right those who are outside the kingdom focus on the parable that is like if you actually insist that you must eat the physical flesh of Jesus and drink his physical blood. It's the same thing when you're insisting that, oh, Jesus must come out of the sky as a flesh and blood person, <laughs> right? Riding on a physical cloud. Then you are insisting on the allegory and therefore you are outside the kingdom according to Jesus. Okay? That, see, all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see and not perceive. So, that is why Jesus said, the world will see me no more. <laughs> right? Because the only way to see Christ now is to see him with the perception, right? That hearing they may hear and not understand. The only way to, to hear Christ now is with the understanding. Because Christ has gone into the realm of the Spirit he is hidden by the cloud. He is out of sight. Out of the natural sight. So you got to see him with the spiritual eye, the spiritual sight, the perception, right? The perception, the you have to perceive him. All right? 
But those inside the kingdom, he says, it was given them to know. Right? Ginosko. To know. Right? Let's look at the, 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 um, the Greek. Ginosko. To know. Right? To have intimate knowledge of. Right? It's an experience. Right? Knowing but not merely to know based on personal observation or perception but also based on actual rational truth. Not merely that which is based or bound only by sight and experience. Such knowing comes from Yahweh to completely grasp and have the comprehension of. <laughs> right? That is why Jesus said to his disciples, when the Holy Spirit come, he will, teach, he will lead you into all truth. Not some truth, not partially, not partial truth. The disciples, the apostles had all truth and that truth was Christ. They understood who Christ really was. And by, understood, by understanding who Christ really was, they understood who they really were. And I, that is something that I will deal with coming up, in a, in a study coming up, right? So those inside would know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But those outside, they will only be talking about the parable. <laughs> right? They will be talking about the cloud in heaven. They will be talking about seated at the right hand. They will, they will be talking about sanctuary in heaven. They will be talking about most holy place and holy place. They will be talking about um, a, 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 a physical structure coming down out of the sky and landing on the earth. <laughs> they will be talking about a physical New earth made new. Right? All of these things are parables and proverbs. Right? Scripture must be used to interpret these allegories, these parables, these signs. All right? So let's move on to... So let me just um, wrap that point up. Right? that the Holy Spirit was needed to give the understanding of the allegory of Christ ascending into heaven in the cloud out of sight. 